Hey, what's happening, everybody? Thanks for tuning back in. Uh, first and foremost, I'm sorry for being away for so long. Um, I've just been slammed in my non-crypto life, so um, I'm back for now. I know none of you guys care about that, so get right into it. This video is going to be covering the feeder settings that I'm using for now and that I've been using for the past couple weeks, along with the defender settings that I'm using. I'll kind of go over that, touch base, but. I mean, obviously I've been gone for a while, um, traveling and stuff. So I really haven't had a chance to check in on a lot of these settings. I've just kind of been letting it ride. Um, Defender's done his job. I mean, 48 complete completed pairs. Um, I have two holdings right now. Um, I have two bags. So basically things have been good. I mean, the markets have been um, pretty steady to be honest. I mean, we've, we've dipped back, back down to what, 63, 62. We've jumped back up to 67. Um, today we had a nice little pump. So all in all, um, this has been a really great kind of profit trailer season for, for everybody. And, um, and Defender has definitely been doing its job when a certain coin goes a little bit too negative. So, um, that's cool. Um, the biggest changes, um, I also want to give a shout out to Ferry because Ferry Hendricks in our Discord group, if you're not in our Discord group, then I definitely recommend checking that out because we have um, some really, really smart guys in there who are going over their app settings when I'm not around. So if I'm, if you don't see a YouTube video from me for a while, head over to our Discord and um, and you can get some input over there. So what we got going on? Um, the biggest change I made, and this, this is definitely with help from both Metadone and, and Ferry, uh, crafting this, this, uh, app settings file, but the biggest changes, I mean, we've talked about this in the past is we, I'm using these labels now, these one hour, uh, BB indicators. I'm using the new four hour indicators. Um, I have a lot of these five minute indicators. And so my biggest change um, in this app settings file is actually, I've gone super micro. Like I've, I've literally gone down to the five minute candles for almost all of my buying strategies. Um, you'll kind of see later on in the video, um, but we can kind of scoot down past all this stuff. Um, nothing too intense to go over this, this app settings file is far too long to get into everything. But what I did here too, with the DCA um, percentages and the DCA levels is I've, I've switched things up. So basically what I want to happen in a DCA situation is if I get a pair that goes into, you know, the negative, negative 0.55%, I would like to en enable my DCA strategies. Now that doesn't mean that your DCA strategies like it's automatically going to buy at negative 0.55%. What's going to happen is it's going to wait until all of your DCA strategies are true. And so these are your DCA strategies. At least this is what I'm using. Um, I'm using the stochastic RSI cross the five minute. Um, and so this is the label and mind you, this is a, this is just like a, a word document. So this isn't, these aren't spaced out properly. They're spaced out properly in the app settings um, that I'll upload to the GitHub. But I'm using the, the five minute cross. I'm using the five minute stochastic RSI. And then I'm using the RSI five minute. So the reason for this, the reason I've gone down into the five minute is especially in this market when things aren't moving as quickly as you may like them to, um, by, by narrowing down into the five minute, we can do that right here. Um, I should just turn auto on, but that is all right for now. Um, you can see that with the five minute candlesticks here, there are definitely swings. Like these are oscillating indicators. So, um, you know, on a four hour candle, you may never see a buy on the RSI if we're just kind of hovering in this price zone. So on the five minute, it definitely oscillates more. So down here, you know, there's been times where we've gotten into the thirties um, on the RSI. And then there's times where you get way overbought on the RSI. Um, but then obviously looking at the stochastic, you're seeing massive swings, which is really good. That's we want to take advantage of these, these swings here all the way up to say like 1.4%. That's pretty good. So that's kind of the, the reasoning behind that. Um, and then I've also kind of switched up. I know you guys 
um, have definitely asked me about my DCA enabled. Well, that's kind of my thought there is I want it to be enabled instantly. And then once it's enabled, it just has to wait for these DCA strategies to become true. Pretty simple. Now, the difference is here is what I've done is uh, Ferry actually gave me this idea. There's There's been a lot of people who use similar strategies to this, this DCA. I, I know this is nothing new. I haven't created this by any means, but I've gone all the way down 100 levels deep. I believe it's 100. Um, and it just, it, it slowly decreases in value. So these are your buy percentages. The first level is 100%. Second level is 50, then 33%. And keep in mind, as it gets lower and lower, um, it, the, the less close to zero you're going to get. But my reasoning here is I can DCA for a longer amount of time. And especially because I was traveling, go, like leaving, uh, my house and stuff, I wanted to be able to sit in these bags and not worry about locking up all of my capital too soon. So what I did was I just let this thing ride and I, I checked in on it periodically. And, um, you know, I got down to level 30, 35, um, even into the forties, I believe sometimes. And, and then finally defender or, or PT ends up just selling it, um, because the, the markets kind of rebound or defender kind of does its job and, and kind of takes over with the auto defend. So, um, this has actually been a really interesting kind of test for me and I, I really like it. So, um, test this for yourself if you so choose. Um, and then the next thing here is just the sell strategy and the sell values. So, um, this just has to do with um, what level you're at and and what percentage um, you're willing to to part ways with profit. So as you get deeper and deeper into DCA levels, maybe you're okay with just selling for a much smaller profit than than maybe if if you know you're you're only one level deep. So this is kind of another insurance policy a little bit um, in case the coin pumps a slight bit, puts you into profit, and then it dumps. Well, maybe you'll be able to get out of that. Um, in a profitable trade instead of holding on for your dear life there. So we'll kind of continue down a little bit further. Um, I actually am using a stop loss trigger. I'm probably going to delete these when I upload this. Um, my main reasoning here is I just don't think everybody wants to use a stop loss. So if, if you are going to use these settings, um, just do a control find and make sure there's no DCA stop loss triggers in there. Um, I'll delete this for now, so that way we know. Um, but then going into the market conditions grouping, nothing too crazy except for the fact that I'm not overriding really anything too significant in these market conditions. Um, I, I prefer to override different strategies um, on a coin specific basis. So there's some small nuances in here where I change you know, the RSI um, lower or the, the buy strategy for the, um, stochastic RSI a little bit lower. Um, and then it increases as we go into the sideways and bull and, and super bull markets here. But I think the most interesting stuff that we can talk about in this video is, is these coin specific groupings. So obviously we talked about the new coins grouping in the past, nothing really new here. Um, if a coin has been on the exchange for less than 30 days, I don't want to buy it. Sell only mode is enabled. Um, if somehow you end up with a coin, I don't know how that would happen. Maybe manually trading. Um, there's only a DCA max buy times of three and they're extremely low to kind of catch the bottom if it does dump. So let's see price, price dip grouping. Um, a lot of these come from both myself and, and Ferry talking about this. Ferry uh, Hendrix in our discord group has done a lot of, of research into a lot of these coin specific groupings. So um, I can't take all the credit for this. Um, he's definitely done a lot of, of really good stuff and uh, he shares his app settings in our discord group. So um, definitely head over to the discord. Nothing too crazy here. All this is saying is if the market top coin change is less than or equal to this config trigger name. So if the top coins have changed um, less than or equal to 4%, negative 4%, then you're in a dip, like the market is dipping. So sell only mode is enabled, the DCA um, is enabled as well. Um, I commented out the stop loss, I can get rid of this because I don't want people getting caught on that. Um, 
base currency price drop grouping. So this is also this kind of the same idea. It's saying if your base currency, so I'm using Bitcoin, Bitcoin is less than or equal to negative 3%, then my overrides are here. So I have a DCA stop loss trigger at negative four. I'll delete that. Um, so you guys don't get caught on that. Um, same with that. Um, and then I have DCA enabled at negative one because if Bitcoin is dropping significantly, I expect the rest of the coins to start dropping um, alongside it within you know the coming hours or minutes, whatever. So I, I just lower my DCA enabled about 0.5%. Just a little bit of an insurance policy there. Um, this should actually say pair price drop grouping. Um, so this is basically saying the pair that you're currently trading, the pair that you're currently holding, say it's ADA BTC. Um, if that is less than or equal to config trigger name one, which is negative 2%, if it's dropped negative 2% over the past 24 hours and the pair percentage change, uh, or this is your base currency, I apologize. If your base currency, so Bitcoin has dropped 2% and your pair has dropped 3%, then use these, override this stuff. And you can put volume in here, like you could add, you could do and, and, um, you know, volume, I forget the name of it, where is it? It's up here, pair.volume. Um, so you can literally use this exact thing here. Um, config trigger name three, and then you can get really creative with, with these uh, different coin specific groupings. And there's been some really, really interesting things that have been brought up, different hedging strategies with using uh, TUSD or USDT, um, different different uh, defender strategies. I know that there, there's a couple people working on that right now to, to kind of help um, speed up the defender process. If something um, dips pretty significantly, how can you help yourself um, in that situation? And, and you can do that on a pair specific basis using these different uh, pair groupings. So this is interesting here, uh, the 24 hour critical volume or critical downtrend protection. It's just saying if the pair volume is less than or equal to a thousand BTC um, and the pair percentage change is less than negative 5.5%, then I wanna go into the four hour um, indicators. That's kind of what my thought process was there. If things are dipping significantly, um, you know, use a four hour indicator. And that's kind of where I'm, I'm getting, you know, you can't do this, um, this indicator change on a coin by coin basis without adding these labels. So that's really important. This was a really cool thing that uh, the creator of Feeder, Metadone, he, he had uh, explained this to me. So this has been super, super helpful. Um, you can change the indicators on a coin specific basis and actually in PT, the buy strategy label will show whatever you have here. So stochastic RSI four hour cross. So it'll say that and if it'll say it's true or not true or false cross, et cetera. So that's cool. Um, base coin pump grouping. Um, th this is something also kind of interesting. Um, you could go a couple different directions here. If, if your base coin, AKA Bitcoin or Ethereum or BNB, whatever you're trading starts to pump really hard, five, 6%, 3%. Um, you could maybe lower your, your sell value and put everything back into BTC. So you could even sell at a loss if you wanted to. Um, you could make your, your sell strategy a gain and sell it at, you know, negative 1%. And then if anything is, you know, negative 1% or lower, it'll, it'll sell or negative 1% or higher, it'll sell. And you'll, you'll get, maybe you'll take a small loss but maybe your, your base currency will actually offset that loss if, if you switch back into Bitcoin. So that's a strategy I've been looking into a little bit there. Um, and then that kind of sums that up. So let's go into the Defender stuff here. Um, what I've been using here is, is I've been using a max rebuy. of It actually hasn't been 100. Um, let's put this down. I've been using a max rebuy of 25. So that's been kind of the sweet spot for me, especially when you're running more pairs at a time. Um, it, it You're not gonna get as much profit and it's gonna take more rounds to get through, but especially in a market like this where things are cycling um, in and out and in and out. I mean, I've had 48 complete coins in the past couple of weeks. So this has been something that's been working. Um, I'm taking advantage of this this action, this price action in here. So. I can kind of dig in and explain that in a second. 
All right, so let's dig into how this works. So for example, I'm holding a bag of Cardano and I bought it quite a long time ago. I bought it back on the 18th of August. And so it dipped all the way down to negative 40% since August, which is insane. And then it's climbed back up and now I'm sitting at about negative 22, 23%, right? Great, that's great, no big deal. Um, the problem is if you want to return to back where you you your original purchase price, it's more percentage. It's it it has to climb about thirty percent to get back to where you bought it, and that just has to do with um, the current market valuation of the coin um, in, increasing in price to to back to where you got it. So it's actually more than the negative percentage that you're in right now, which is you know maybe to some people confusing, but that that can take a long time to to go positive 29 30 percent um these are just rough estimates you know but unless you're trading ripple which pops off for you know 100 percent in a in a weekend um that that can be pretty difficult so um you may you may be waiting quite some time so the nice thing is is if we go down to the five minute which is what we're trading um in profit trailer after you just saw my my settings you can see that there are some serious price action. There's there's definitely some room for gains. Um, even here, that's a seven percent to the top is ten percent. Um, you've seen, you know, this obviously is from the bottom, but even on the the sort of intraday, uh, maybe twenty minute time frames, you're seeing a couple percent move. Problem is, if if you're just kind of holding and waiting, you're you're never really gonna make those profits. So that's why um, I employ the auto defend function. And when my coins go to negative 10%, um, what happens is defender kicks in and it breaks up your bag. So say you defender got kicked in somewhere in, in this area. Um, you know, obviously it's going to, it's going to split up your bag into two portions and, uh, the, the smaller one that's left behind in dust generally is, is going to wait for profit trailer to make a buy and if you're using these five minute candles you can see that on some of these these situations like right in here profit trailer definitely would have made a buy right about here um, because using our strategy um, from these settings that i just went over um, the the stochastic rsi is below point uh, 20 and the rsi is well, maybe the RSI wouldn't have let us get a buy, so maybe we would have to have waited a little longer. So we keep going, and maybe maybe in this time frame we would have gotten a buy. Negative, uh, we're at about 18 in here somewhere, which probably would have signified a buy in the current market condition that we would have been in. And then the the RSI traditional sitting at about 35, 36. So maybe you would have caught a buy somewhere in this time frame. And if you time the bottom, if if that was you know. A solid buy maybe you're looking at a one a two percent gain and what that would do is cycle through one of the the uh rounds for for defender and that would allow you to make a a sort of a small profit off of that trade and then defender will continue into round two and and continue this process as time goes on permitting your buying strategies are are giving you um, good buying opportunities, then you'll continue to cycle through. And ultimately, when it's done, you know, once you've made back your profit, they go into this complete tab and you can see, you know, these settings have been definitely working well. So um, even right here in real time, we're seeing a, a definite bounce of about a percent. And at least with my settings, selling a 0.5% gain, um, we would have made a small profit here. So that's all uh that's that's the basic reason why i use defender is because if you go out to the one day um where i initially purchased cardano was on the 18th of august which was about over a month ago and i i'm still would be waiting with defender i've been able to capture a lot of these swings and been able to recoup a lot of my loss and at the end of the day, making profit. So that's that's exactly why I use Defender. Um, it's it's becoming one of those add-ons that I just I won't run Profit Trailer without it. Um, and then same goes for Feeder. I definitely won't run Profit Trailer without having a solid Feeder strategy because once again, we're able to to update our coin-specific settings um, based on market movement.
with profit trailer, you don't really get that luxury. And that's why um, I use these two add-ons in conjunction to really just allow to give us the best shot of making uh, a profit. So um, once again, this is definitely not financial advice. Um, you know, you got to do your own research. Don't just copy the settings and, and think you're going to get rich somewhere. Like you got to, you got to do your own research. I definitely change my settings quite often. Um, I'm going to go in and look at the bags that I've accumulated um, over the past couple of weeks and back test it, see what happened, why I got into those bags and try and alter the settings to not let that happen again. <laughs> so um, the last couple of things I want to go over is just uh, news. Um, and if you guys have questions about feeder or defender, um, hop in the discord. We have, we have a lot of people who can answer those questions. I'll, I'll do my best to, to get in there and answer them as well. Um, if you haven't picked up a copy of any of these profit trailer, feeder, defender, links are all in the description. Um, it helps the channel out. But what we'll go over here is some interesting stuff. So in one of the last videos, I talked about the, um, coins that I like to look into. Um, and that's stuff like this Dell eyes blockchain investment to boost business growth. So this is a prime example. So Dell subsidiary Dell EMC is looking into blockchain technology as a way to draw more customers to its server business. So using real life, big time fortune 500 companies integrating, uh, their, their traditional businesses into the blockchain space is extremely interesting to me. And that's a play that I can use to play these companies in in more of a traditional sense maybe buy dell stock or maybe buy at&t stock right um at&t launches blockchain solution targeting supply chain and healthcare another prime example of what i was talking about in previous videos is things like this where big companies the world's largest telecom firm at&t has launched a suite of blockchain services targeting diverse industries um another thing like this austrian government to notarize $1.3 billion bond auction using Ethereum. That's good news for Ethereum. Um, just, just a lot of interesting news. I guess the stuff that I'd like to go into is kind of the security side of things, which is a Chinese banking giant is issuing a $1.3 billion securities. I don't know why it took so long for that to load, but um, is issuing $1.3 billion in securities on a blockchain. So this is really, really interesting to me. Um, it, they're moving the credit data of mortgages onto a distributed network. Uh, different parties along the insurance or the issuance process are able to view the most up-to-date information and conduct due diligence and settle transaction in a peer-to-peer -peer fashion. This is really interesting to me because this kind of goes back to 2008 when, um, you know, basically a residential mortgage-backed security is typically made up of a pool of mortgage loans owned by financial institutions which group these loans into tranches and depending on their, they're, they're, they're basically grouped depending on the risk and return. So you have um, different mortgage bonds, right? That you can buy here in the U S for sure. Um, and they're, they're rated, you know, and that's, that's the exact problem that we ran into in 2008 with the, the mortgage crisis. Um, they were selling junk bonds and labeling them as, as legitimate, legitimate offerings right and they they just weren't um they were homes bought by on mass credit and and the the it was just a, a whirlwind i have multiple videos about that but this kind of thing with with blockchain and being able to view the most up-to-date information and conduct um, is really interesting to me so this is just something that kind of popped out to me when i was reading over um the the, the daily news pretty much um and then this article we don't even need to go into. So with that said, check out the Discord. Um, check out the check out Feeder. If you don't have Feeder, check it out. It's a solid product. I love it. I won't run Profit Trailer without Feeder. Um, if you haven't checked out Defender, I won't run Profit Trailer without Defender now because it just works. Um, been gone, been away, 48 completed. Um, and, and you can't get these results with Defender without having a solid buying strategy and solid uh, settings in feeder. So I think they run hand in hand. You need to have them both. And unfortunately it costs money, but um, that's the way that it works. So um, with that said, if you guys are interested, join the discord and I'll catch you all in the next video. Take it easy.